okay uh, good morning then today we are going to discuss about the uh, residual sedimentary rock deposits we have already uh, seen about the sedimentary classification where we have seen the uh, plastic rock non plastic rock where in the non non plastic rock we have further classified them into organic uh, chemical yeah. and residual so today we are going to discuss about the uh, residual rock which is classified under non plastic division okay so let us see first what actually residual sedimentary deposits are the residual uh, deposits are the insoluble products of the weathering which have escaped the distribution or transporting agencies and which still mantle the rock from which they have been derived so now we must understand the meaning of this statement that the residual deposits are the insoluble products so first of all we must uh, uh, we must understand that the it is an insoluble product and not soluble because when uh, uh, intact rock is weathered uh, many of the constituents are dissolved in the uh, transporting agencies like river wind or not wind actually river etc and then they are transported away but these are specifically insoluble products so if they are insoluble they will not be uh, soluble in any kind of agencies if there are any so the residual deposits are the insoluble products of rock weathering so this is very important that it is the product of rock weathering means if you have a intact rock over there and because of its weathering it could be mechanical or chemical but it is the product of that weathering which have escaped the distribution by transporting agencies so this is a very crucial line of the statement that they have escaped the distribution means transporting agencies like river wind etc failed to transport them from the origin site to depositing location means say for example if there is a wind or a river and if it is acting over there they will act as a transporting agency it is the natural tendency of the river to carry forward the weathered sediment to the deposit or depositional basins but here the transporting agencies will not be effective okay in transporting those products of weathering so if they are not transported then of course they will accumulate in situ in situ means at the place of their origin okay so they will accumulate one by one so ultimately what they will do they will mantle the rocks from which they have been derived so ultimately because of their non removal they'll cover the rock from which they are generated so ultimately giving rise to a deposit so the residual deposits are the insoluble products of rock weathering which have escaped distribution by transporting agencies and which still mantle mantle means it covers okay it you know it covers the rock from which they have been derived so this is a very crucial statement regarding residual sedimentary deposit so you have to remember the basic two or three things first that the residual the sedimentary deposits are formed in situ in situ means at the location of their existence okay at one place only second they are not transported at all because the agencies are agencies failed to transport them to the depositional grounds third they are the product of the rock weathering okay only the weathering can develop such products which can be converted into residual sedimentary deposits so let us see what actually the process is responsible for their formation residual concentration okay so it is the accumulation of valuable minerals okay so you must uh, see this statement very sincerely it is the result of accumulation of valuable minerals means those minerals which, which are valuable okay 
means you know when the residual concentration deposits are dealt we are specifically dealing with ores and ores are those minerals which are economically viable means if you sell them you will get the money you will generate the economy so this is very important that if you are talking about residual concentration or residual deposits we are more eager to discuss the ore minerals so it is the result in the accum accumulation of valuable minerals when undesired constituents of rocks undesired means those constituent which are of no economic value okay those are undesired undesired constituent of rocks or mineral are removed during weathering so this is very important okay means what actually happens when the residual concentration occurs or the process of residual sedimentary deposits or the rock uh, initiates what happens the desired mineral or the valuable minerals accumulates whereas the undesired minerals or the constituents are removed okay either due to weathering or due to transport agency that is another part but they are removed from it okay and only the valuable or the mineral of interest is accumulated the concentration is due largely to a decrease in volume affected almost entirely by superficial chemical weathering so this is very important that the concentration of this valuable mineral is largely due to decrease in volume means the volume of the uh, intact rock is decreased because of weathering where the undesired minerals or the constituents are removed and the desired constituents are concentrated over there okay specifically in case of superficial chemical weathering okay we are more eager, we are more uh, you know uh, interested in superficial chemical weathering because mechanical weathering does not play a very strong role it plays but not strong role in the formation of the deposits so the superficial chemical weathering is due for such concentration so when such concentration occurs it is also called as leaching of the valuable minerals when such leaching happens then those Uh, accumulations will slowly turn into residual sedimentary deposit and if they are compacted cemented and you know whatever happens to form the sedimentary rock then it can be called as a sedimentary residual sedimentary rocks okay so this is very important uh, this is very important to understand that the residual concentration is the process responsible for its development now let us see some examples of this residual concentration deposits for residual sedimentary rocks the first one is laterite we have all seen such kind of rock okay in hindi or marathi we usually call them as murum yeah murum type of rock okay where that those are red in color and when those are red in color of course that shows the presence of iron oxide okay presence of iron okay and its oxidation gives the red color so laterite is uh, is both a soil and a rock type as i said murum murum is a soil so when it is compacted cemented you know it is when it is converted into a hard tough rock then it is it is a rock otherwise sometimes you may get it the soil so laterite is is a rock type rich in iron and aluminium probably more in iron iron than aluminium and is commonly considered to have formed in hot and wet tropical areas so remember that the laterite occurs in the hot and tropical areas okay where the hot and the humid both are exist you know uh, together you know why because when the humidity is there in the hot tropical environment the uh, chemical weathering are dominant okay if your environment is dry you will not get the chemical weathering uh, dominance okay if you have a uh, water in your air if your humidity is high and the temperature is uh, slightly high in that case the chemical weathering or the chemical activities are more pronounced so ultimately giving rise to the superficial chemical weathering and resulting into such kind of rock so tropical environments are the best environment for the formation of such kind of rock nearly all laterites are of rusty red coloration because of high iron oxide content as i told already as i already told you that there is the high proportion of iron oxide because of which their appearance is red or rusty red in color 
Lateral usually occurs in tropical environment. In our country, we may find such concentrations in Madhya Pradesh, okay, in the form of ore deposits. We also have some deposits in Maharashtra, okay. So we have lots of deposits of laterite over here because we, our country falls in the tropical region. Let us see another example, uh, bauxite. Bauxite is a sediment, residual sedimentary rock which is relatively high aluminum content and it is world's main source of aluminum and gallium. Let us uh, forget gallium, we will focus on aluminum. So bauxite is also a residual sedimentary rock with a relatively high aluminum content, okay. Laterite was relatively high in iron content. He, he, uh, this is high in aluminum content and is world's main source of aluminum. Okay. So, bauxite is well known deposit of uh, aluminum and it is also and it is formed under the effect of residual concentration deposit. We have lots of deposits over here in India, in Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh, Odisha. Uh, you know, we have lots of over there. Okay. There are lots of uh, concentrations are there. And this uh, deposit also is developed by residual concentration deposits and a well-known example of uh, residual sedimentary rock. Let us see the third example, Terra Rosa. Okay, this is uh, some kind of new uh, term for you. Terra Rosa actually, it is derived from the term uh, red soil, which is actually an Italian word. Uh, is a well-known, uh, well-drained, reddish clay to slitty clay soil, okay? The fungus is very fine with the neutral pH condition, okay? Specifically, its condition is neutral and is typical of the Mediterranean region, okay? Terrosa usually occurs in the Mediterranean region, okay? The reddish color of Terra Rosa is the result of the preferential, preferential formation of hematite over goethite, okay? The hematite is more concentrated over goethite. Go hematite and goethite are the ores of uh, iron. So hematite is more prominent over goethite and because of which the reddish color develops over terra rosa. Okay, terra rosa is also a known example of uh, residual sedimentary deposit. So this was all about the residual, residual sedimentary deposits. Okay, it was an overview. Let us revise what we have uh, done today. Uh, this is the presentation on the residual sedimentary rock deposits where we have seen the residual sediment deposits are the insoluble products which are a result of rock weathering and escaped from the transporting agencies, okay? And they are accumulated in situ, means you know where the, where the parent rock is, parent rock exists, there they accumulates over and over and covers the uh, parent rock. The process behind residual sediment deposits are the residual concentrations where actually the valuable minerals are concentrated because of removal of the unwanted constituents of the rock and ultimately the accumulation results into residual sedimentary uh, deposits. Mostly the superficial chemical weathering is much more responsible for such kind of uh, deposit formation. Then we have seen some examples like laterite, Okay, it is an iron rich rock, usually occurs in the tropical areas. Then we have seen bauxite, it is a sedimentary rock which is rich in the aluminium. Uh, it again exists in the tropical region. Terra rosa is there, it is the reddish clay, red soil, okay, and it usually occurs in the Mediterranean region. Uh, the red color is due to the presence of hematite over the goethite. So, this was all about the residual concentration deposits. If you find any queries, questions, you can just put your questions uh, in the chat box or uh, through the WhatsApp platform, or I'm also sharing the Remedial Coaching link in the chat box or and in the WhatsApp. If you find any difficulty regarding this session or the earlier classes, you can put your uh, queries through that Remedial Coaching link. It will be resolved as soon as possible. So thank you very much for your patience listening. Thank you.